What's up YouTube, Tech King Mike, and I'm here with another video for you guys, and today, I want to talk about the Galaxy Z Fold 5. Now, this phone released in August of this year, and while this is not the original Fold 5 that I started my Fold journey with this year, this is the one that I've chosen to go with, and I'll explain to you why exactly I ended up going back with this version instead of the Ice Blue variant, but I have a few things that I want to discuss when it comes to the state of foldable phones and foldable tech. And I also have a few things that I want to discuss when it comes to Samsung and their state of foldable technology. So the first thing that I want to discuss is where are we at with folding phones? We're at a point right now where folding phones are legitimately giving us so much. Cameras are starting to improve on domestic folding phones. The Pixel Fold gave us the first glimpse of what a fold could be like with A1 cameras. Were they as good as the Pixel 8 Pro or the 7 Pro? Not 100%, but they were still pixel grade cameras. They were amazing. Are these cameras as good as the Galaxy S23 Ultra? Hell no. They're good, but they're nowhere near as good as that phone. That phone is the top tier when it comes to Samsung's flagship and it comes to their camera systems. You have the OnePlus Open. Those cameras, I cannot wait to get that phone and test those cameras out because those cameras look like they are A1. And from videos that I've seen from people like Jay Will, from um, Jamal Lee, and there are quite a few other tech YouTubers that I have watched that use the OnePlus Open, I feel like we are starting to get to that point where folding phones are becoming what we all want them to be. They're becoming the phone that is the best form factor when it comes to the phone that you hold in your hand. They're becoming the best camera that you can have in your pocket. You don't have to say, hey, I've got this Z Fold 5 and it has a great folding display and it's got a great screen, but because the cameras aren't that good, I'm gonna reach for my iPhone if I need to take a picture or if I wanna take a video. They're starting to catch up to what we wanted them to be. I know I personally am a good friend of mine, Ike's Tech Talk, have made comments before in the past on Twitter that, hey, if these phones had ultra level cameras, we'd pay the price for them. And that's true, I would. So folding phones are starting to get better when it comes to the camera technology. Hardware is starting to get better with them. It took Samsung five generations of the fold to get to, a, to, get to the point where this clothes is flush. Chinese manufacturers like Huawei, Xiaomi, Oppo, and Honor have been having the flush display when it's closed for at least a year now, at least a year now. And we're finally starting to catch up to it when it comes to Samsung. And then the OnePlus Open, of course. Amazing hardware on that phone as well. In regards to what these phones can do, who buys a folding phone? Who wakes up and says, you know what? I've used a slab style phone for since smartphones became a thing. I want to buy a phone that does this. Who makes that decision? Who's the person who decides that? I used to ask myself that question and then I feel like with this phone, I became that person. Now, if you guys have watched the channel before, I've had the Fold 3 and I've had the Fold 4, but I never kept them. I never chose to main them as a daily phone. And the main reason for that is because I always got worried. I always kept thinking, man, something's going to happen to this, this soft inner display. I kept thinking, man, something's going to mess up. What am I going to do if this happens? And I always ended up getting rid of them. I picked up the Fold 5 again. Because after having one for at least a month and a half and having no other phone in the house, getting rid of it and picking up the iPhone 15 Pro Max, I missed the functionality of this thing so much that I had to pick up another one. And with the Black Friday deals that are going on right now and that are still happening with Cyber Monday, there's no way I was going to pass up the deal that I got on this phone. 512 gigs of storage. And with the trade-in, less than $1,000, you cannot beat that. But these phones truly do change the way that I look at, at smartphones and technology. I have gotten to a point where in my everyday life and in my day-to-day -day life, or like that's the same thing, <laughs> in my everyday life, I've gotten to a point where I find ways to use this phone the way that it was meant to be used. When it comes to quick tasks and things like that, the phone is always closed. When it comes to anything that I want to do that involves me having to do a little bit extra, open up. I don't know why I just love doing that on camera. It looks like I'm a little kid, like tee -hee. But all, all jokes aside, 
These things are a power user's dream, but they're also a minimalist dream. Now, if you've watched my channel before, you know that I've joked around on live streams and I've even said in videos of the past that I wanted to move towards being a minimalist, right? And this phone, folding phones in general, serve that purpose for me. I have two devices in one when I leave the house. When I'm gone for five days at a time as a truck driver, when I'm driving, I have my phone, okay? It's mounted to the dash or it's sitting in the cup holder and if I need to, I have my phone to make calls, make text, whatever. When I'm done for the day, if I wanna pop this thing open and I wanna play a few games on the phone, I wanna read a book, wanna look at a little bit of content, you got flex mode if I wanna do anything like that. This thing serves so many purposes and so many functions that I don't even want to take a tablet out of the house. I don't want to take my laptop out of the house. I want to just carry this and I want to be content with it, especially when it comes to having a TV and having a USB-C to HDMI output. Now I've got Samsung Dex. Give me a little Bluetooth keyboard and a Bluetooth mouse and I've got a desktop interface in my, in my truck powered by my phone. So these things serve so much of them, so much more purpose than a regular slab style phone. Now, Samsung, this is where we need to have a conversation. The Pixel Fold showed us what a moleskin notebook, what a passport style fold could be like domestically for the United States. We had the Oppo Find N, and a lot of people didn't know about that phone unless you watch somebody like Gadget Goddess who covers almost every fold, domestic and abroad. There are other channels out there that cover the Oppo, the Oppo Find N and the Find N2, but we did not have a phone that someone could walk into a carrier store and buy. And this is the part that I feel like a lot of people are not really understanding when it comes to these folding phones. If people cannot walk into a carrier store and buy one, chances are they're not going to know about it unless people like me or other content creators that you watch talk about them. And the Fold 5 is Samsung's fifth generation of folding phones. This is their fifth time doing it. And they're still not getting a few things right. These cameras are similar to the cameras that you get on the S23 Plus. As a matter of fact, I'm going to even say that I think the S23 Plus may have a may maybe a little bit better when it comes to these cameras. The battery is nowhere near as good as you get on the S24 or the S23 Ultra. The overall screen real estate on the outside of the phone. While I do enjoy the one-handed use of it because my hand is a lot can go across the screen really easily, I do wish it was a little bit wider. I do wish it was as wide as a Pixel Fold. Maybe not this tall, but as wide as a Pixel Fold. You have phones like the OnePlus Open where the hardware is perfect. You have a tight hinge. You have flex mode. You have a spring action open when you open the phone. You have a screen that is perfect for one-handed use. So many people flock to the Pixel Fold and the OnePlus Open because Samsung, they gave us what we want, which is a wider display. Now, I'm not asking Samsung to make this thing the size of the S23 Ultra or the S24 Ultra because I feel like at that point, it's going to be too cumbersome unless they can keep it as thin as a Mi Mix Fold. But until then, Samsung, we need to see change with the Z Fold 6. Make the screen real estate just a little bit wider, just a few more millimeters wider. And I guarantee you, so many people will enjoy that slight subtle change. Maybe update the design language a little bit. Give us a few more custom colors. I like this color. I like the blue and the black. Don't get me wrong, it's nice, but this ain't it. Ain't this ain't it. I like this blue, but I hate this black camera bump. But I still chose it again because I like this blue and I like the matte edges across the entire phone. I enjoy that. But Samsung, you can do better. You've gotten complacent. The Pixel Fold and the OnePlus Open should be a wake up call to Samsung. They should be the kick in the butt that Samsung needs to get the fold back to the point that it was, which is the cutting edge, the bleeding edge, the de facto standard for domestic foldable phones. The Z Flip 5 is hands down one of the most popular folding devices that I have ever seen. In the job that I formerly held as an instructor at a, at, a, at a CDL school, I saw so many folding phones, so many flip phones. And 
It was so cool to see it in person. But whenever I'd ask somebody, hey, if you had one complaint about this phone, what's your what, what would you say the complaint is? I wish the screen was a little wider. Samsung, we can fix this. Not necessarily me and you, but you, we can fix this. And consumers can fix it too. Consumers can fix it too, Samsung. But here's the problem. The consumers are going to fix it because they're going to stop buying it. They're going to stop rocking with you. Samsung, fix it. I truly believe that when this phone hits that point, it's going to be the fold to beat. It's going to be the de facto standard. Until then, it is currently my fold to beat. And that's only because I have not gotten my hands on a OnePlus Open or on a Pixel Fold. Now, if I catch a good deal on those devices, I'm going to get those because I want to compare the two of them. Or the three of them, I should say. I'd like to put all three of them side by side. They all work with Verizon, so therefore I'm not worried about whether I can use them with my cellular uh, network. But I want to compare them because I'm at the point where these folding phones are it for me. So even with all the stand, even with all the things that this phone doesn't get right, I'm still comfortable carrying it every day as my main phone. I used to be worried about durability. Durability used to bother the hell out of me when it came to these phones. I've gotten over it. I pay Samsung monthly for their insurance. And I also have a backup phone if I need one. So I'm not too worried about something happening to this phone if something does happen to it that's what i got insurance for but when it's all said and done we are at a point where these phones are going to start taking over slowly but steadily they're going to start taking over they're going to start becoming this gold standard for what a smartphone is and i really do think that as these cameras get better as battery life gets better form factors change and form factors adapt and become more of a standard issue I think that we're going to hit a point in time that we did for about that good 10 years where Android phones were just every time they came out, my goodness, look at this new device, look at this new design. We're going to hit that with these folding phones. And I'm excited about it. I truly am. I'd love to see where this goes and I'd love to see what the future holds for it. Because what's after this? Rollables? Stretching phones? Phones that are in the glasses? Vision OS like Apple? Who knows? But either way... I'm excited for it. Tech is fun. Tech is fun. There is no way, there is no other way to describe it. Tech is fun. And foldable phones are fun for me. They're exciting. They're entertaining. They give me a certain level of novelty that I didn't realize I sought after and wanted as bad as I do before I got this phone. And so after about three months of off and on usage and after not having one for a while... I'm glad to have this phone back and I'm glad to say that folding phones are here to stay. Want Samsung to fix a few things, like I said, but all those things aside, I don't really think that anything is going to beat this at this point in time. Now, that being said, I am going to cover more on these foldable phones. So when I do get the OnePlus open in stock, not in stock, when I do get the OnePlus open in my pocket, Best believe there will be a video comparing the two of them. I don't really care about getting the video out first. I'm getting it on my time and I'm getting it on my dime. That's the biggest thing to consider. So when I get the OnePlus open, we'll talk about it. And then if I catch a Pixel Fold on a good used deal, we'll talk about it as well. Folding phones have so much to offer and I want to be able to give you guys the best information that you can get on what these folding phones have to offer. So... Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 5. Let's see what the Z Fold 6 has in store for us. But stay tuned for more videos on this. Got a few more accessory videos and just different things I want to talk about when it comes to this phone. So if you guys enjoyed the video, hit the like button, maybe subscribe. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. It's Tech King Mike. Peace.